नम शिवाया ओम नम शिवाया ओम नम शिवाया ओम नम शिवाया ओम नमस्ते so the problem with all materialistic philosophies is that they tacitly assume the pre-existence of something they don't say what it is that's why it's tacit well, for example the big bang theory of the scientists the big bang is a huge explosion of energy now where does that energy come from they can't explain or they don't explain they simply assume that it was there somehow or other and at a certain point in time or maybe at the beginning of time it just exploded kaboom <laughs> the big kablooey theory well we don't buy that because it does not solve the question of prior cause in other words if there was something existing before the big bang what was it and how does it create the conditions the situation for the big bang science is silent on this because it would have to be something non-material given that the material universe is created at that point in other words they purposely narrow the field of inquiry to eliminate anything subtle or anything resembling consciousness in other words they're atheists this is their bias so this atheistic bias arises out of an enviousness of god how can god have absolute power and complete knowledge of everything huh we want to have that power we want to have that knowledge so out of that feeling which is not acknowledged by the scientists they pretend that everything is is neutral and objective huh but it isn't and the way you can tell is that all their theories depend on some prior existence that they don't say anything about and the same is true of the sankhyas actually the sankhya philosophy simply dressed up in scientific or pseudo scientific jargon is the materialism of today the scientism because it's a religious belief there's no way they can go back and verify what happened in the big bang unless somebody invents a time machine which isn't likely <laughs> their own science prohibits it but we can how well we can become self-realized and we can go and approach god and say well how did you do this <laughs> and actually it's all revealed in the vedic scriptures there's no need for speculation at all and this is called avaroha panta receiving knowledge in a descending path from the original source which is god whereas science and sankhya and similar philosophies that re rely on philosophical speculation and unwarranted assumptions are called aroha panta the upward going path where they take a whole bunch of small evidences and string them all together into <laughs> some theory huh and then they say that it's justified because of that evidence but their evidence is all observation of the dualistic creation and as we have pointed out many many times it is a well known philosophical issue that we cannot prove the existence of the material creation we cannot prove that it's real why is that 
because we have nothing to measure it with. We have nothing to compare it with. For example, if I say, well, this distance is about one foot. How can I say that? I can go and compare it with a tape measure or a ruler. Or if I want to be really accurate, a standard in some standards organization or a meter or whatever measure I use. But you can't do that with the material creation. The universe is all there is, according to the scientists. <laughs> but we can. We can compare the relative, temporary, conditioned existence of the universe with the eternal, absolute, unconditioned existence of Brahman. How? Simply by realizing Brahman. And as soon as we do, the whole lie falls apart and everything is revealed as what it really is. So we're going to take up from where we left off last time. And it's very interesting how Shankaracharya presents the arguments of the Samkhyas in great detail and with absolute fidelity to their sources. How can he do this? Well, because he can easily defeat it with Vedanta. Now, among these, the Sankhyas think that the insentient Pradhan, comprising its three constituents, Gunas, Sattva, Rajas, and Tamas, is the cause of the universe. They say, the Upanishadic texts, which according to you, Vedantin, reveal an omnipotent and omniscient Brahman as the cause of the universe, can be understood equally well to imply that Pradhan is the cause of the universe. As for omnipotence, Pradhan can also have it well enough in respect of its own modifications. Similarly, omniscience is also logical. How? Sankhya. That which you consider to be knowledge is a characteristic of sattva, as is proved from the Smriti, knowledge springs from sattva, Gita 14.17. And the yogins, possessed of body and senses, are well known to be omniscient by virtue of their knowledge that is a characteristic of sattva, it being a familiar fact that omniscience follows from the highest perfection of sattva. For it cannot be imagined that the attributeless, all-pervasive entity, Purusha, that is mere consciousness without a body and senses, can have any knowledge of either all things or a few. But Pradhan, comprising its three constituents, has sattva, the source of all knowledge, even in its own primordial state of Pradhan, that is, balance of the three constituents. And therefore, omniscience in a secondary sense is declared in the Upanishadic text for this Pradhan, even though it is insentient. In postulating omniscience for Brahman, it has to be admitted even by you that Brahman becomes omniscient by its potentiality to know everything. Not that Brahman stands there actually knowing all things for all times. For on the assumption that Brahman's knowledge is eternal, its independence with regard to the act of knowing will be compromised. On the contrary, if the act of knowing be impermanent, Brahman will cease to exist when the act of knowing ceases, or may cease from the act of knowing, according to another reading. That being the case, the conclusion that emerges is that omniscience follows from the potentiality to know everything. But your standpoint is that Brahman is devoid of any accessory before creation. It is not, however, logical that anyone should have any knowledge even in the absence of body, senses, etc. Moreover, modifications are possible for pradhan, that is composite by nature, so that it can reasonably become a material cause like earth, etc. 
whereas Brahman, which is uniform by nature and non-composite, can have no modification. Oh boy, what a mess. <laughs> a bunch of completely self-contradictory ideas based on unwarranted assumptions about the nature of Brahman, Pradhan, and reality in general. Well, how are the Vedantins going to reply? Let's take a look at the next sutra, Vedantin. As against such a contention, this aphorism is advanced. Ikshater na shabdam. The pradhan of the sankhyas is na, not the cause of the universe, because it is ashabdam, not mentioned in the Upanishads, which fact is clear, ikshate, from the fact of seeing or deliberation. The pradhan of the sankhyas is not the cause of the universe, because it is not mentioned in the Upanishads, which fact is clear from the fact of seeing or thinking. In the Upanishadic texts, one cannot take one's stand on the insentient pradhan imagined by the Sankhyas as the cause of the universe, for it is not presented in the Upanishads. How is it not presented in the Upanishads? On account of the fact of seeing. How? The Upanishads teach thus, starting with the text, O amiable one, before its creation, the universe was but existence, Brahman, one without a second. Chandogya Upanishad 6 2, 1. It is stated that Brahman visualized, I shall become many, I shall be born. That Brahman created fire. Chandogya Upanishad 6 2, 3. In that text, the universe, manifested as names and forms and referable by the word it, is first ascertained to be identified with existence before its creation. Then the text shows that the creatorship of fire, etc., that follows the visualization of future creation, belongs to that very entity called existence, which is under consideration. So also elsewhere. In the beginning, this universe was but the one self alone. There was nothing else whatsoever that winked. He visualized, let me create the worlds. Aitre Upanishad 1, 1, 1 to 2. The text speaks of creation after visualization. At some place, the text declares thus, after introducing the Purusha with 16 limbs. He visualized, he created the vital force, Prashnopanishad 6, 3-4. By the word ikshati, the cognate noun implied by the verb, that is, seeing, is sought to be indicated, as is the case with the word yajati and not the root itself, that is, to see. As a result, one can refer to the following texts and such others which have for their import the omniscient God as the cause of the universe. From him who is omniscient in general and in detail, whose austerity, that is, creative effort, is constituted by knowledge, emerged this Brahman, that is, Hiranyagarbha, as well as name, form, and food. Mundakopanishad 119. As for the statement that Pradhan can become omniscient through the characteristic of knowledge belonging to its constituent sattva, that is not justifiable. For in that state of Pradhan as such, when it has not changed through a loss of balance, there can be no possibility of knowledge as a characteristic of sattva because the constituents of Pradhan are then in balance. Well, so much for those arguments. <laughs> but as we will see, the Sankhyas come up with newer and newer arguments based on the same assumptions. And 
although the Vedantin can easily refute them simply by referring back to the Upanishads, they really never get it. <laughs> and the same is true with the scientists. That's why, for example, we got a couple of comments from an apologist for the scientists who is trying to have it both ways and say that, well, scientism is true, but also there is a God and so on and so on. Well, we deleted those comments because, well, for one, he wasn't respectful in his presentation. And second of all, he is actually going against the conclusion of Vedanta, the conclusion of the Brahma Sutras, the conclusion of Shankaracharya, that the ultimate creator must be Brahman. And what does he create? The illusion of duality, which is the secondary Brahman, that is Saguna Brahman. And we will explain more in the next episode. Aung Tat Sat, Aung Shakti Aung, Aung Namah Shivaya. <laughs>